at Philippine City Quarantima doctors serve vaccination recipients. As level 3 alert is resolved, city recycling stations resume operations. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. Since the Philippines grounds has become vaccination station, the residents have a deep impression of the beautiful environment and the outstanding services. Some people even come here to take pictures. Tima doctors also seize the opportunity to serve residents. Wearing Tima uniform again, Dr. Simbelli is measuring a resident's blood pressure and providing consultations. She has felt the joy of serving at a free clinic again. I could serve people for those uh, in that uh, uh, special days na walang ginagawa, uh, do some services, it's a happiness. Despite the pandemic for the past year, community-free clinics were stopped. Having the chance to serve at a vaccination station, Dr. Catherine feels it is her responsibility. This COVID thing is really hard on everyone and we as TIMA volunteer doctors, we really want to help. So whatever help that we can give, so we give. To make the residents feel at ease, volunteers have started the disinfection at the city ground since early in the morning. They clean indoor area as well as the garden. We also feel very honored because so many people have come to the city grounds. They will see that the city grounds is very beautiful. Some people come here to take pictures. When people praise us, I feel honored. When I learned that we are getting vaccinated here, I'm very happy because this is city ground. I have confidence and I trust them. After being vaccinated, the residents also have the chance to do good deeds. People recognize city's bamboo bank era spirit. This is a small deed. However, by collecting small money, you can do great deeds. I'm happy too. At a preliminary meeting to the annual World Summit on Food Security, City Foundation joined in to share their experiences. They talk about how volunteers change local eating habits in Zimbabwe. Different enterprises also share their efforts to promote vegetarianism, as every participant hopes to benefit society. We look forward to working together on this. At the 2021 preliminary meeting, prior to the annual World Summit on Food Security, the main topics are separately plant-based food innovation and solving climate change. At the heart of EU food policy, we believe plant-based foods have a key role to play in the transition towards more sustainable and healthy food systems in the EU. Food security has always been a very big issue in Zimbabwe. City Foundation shared their experiences in Zimbabwe, using extra bananas to create edible dried bananas, or using banana peels as fertilizers, planting more vegetables locally. This not only allows local farmers to survive, it also helps nearby villagers. Siji talk about reforming besides money. Siji has a great advantage on the topic of personal mentality change. It's about a cycle of love and the economic advantages it brings. No matter if it's an enterprise taking economic measures, assisting the farming industry to transform, promoting plant-based products, or a charity organization using love and mercifulness to do good deeds, these two groups share a similar goal. After our enterprises have a different starting point compared to us, and we still see hope that they will use their own ways to let mankind walk towards a better future. Discussing topics such as global warming and promoting plant-based food innovation, at the preliminary meeting prior to the annual World Summit on Food Security, different opinions are presented as everyone hopes to achieve a continuous food system. In Malaysia, since the pandemic broke out, many people are facing financial difficulties. City volunteers bought vegetables from farmers and then distributed them to families in need. This way they can help the farmers as well as families in need. As movement control orders continue, vegetable sales are sluggish. The worried vegetable farmers thought of people who can help them. The pandemic has impacted our sale as we face more difficulties. After we harvest the vegetables, people are not buying them. I thought that you give out a lot of food to the needy and people need to eat healthy vegetables. Therefore, I called Ziji. There are vegetables here. Should we deliver it later? The volunteers take actions to help distribute the vegetables. They also share ways of cooking. 
You can cook kidney beans with rice. You can make soup with pigweed. Due to the pandemic, my husband has not been working, so we have little income. We're spending but not saving. There are a lot of members in my family, eight people young and old, so it's a headache to buy food. I'm very grateful for the help. I'm truly happy. Thank you for the meal and the food that they give us. Enough to you for the chef. So start work only after the KP. Around October, maybe October, November, December, like that. So that this will be very good help for us. Thank you very much. I'm happy to receive food. We will no longer go hungry. The volunteers helped the farmers and also created a cycle of love. In our next report, let us meet our South Park salon owner Wong Jin Shen. Before the pandemic, his shop was in great business. Yet during the pandemic, he suffered great economic pressure. Despite that, he used funds to distribute food packages while also providing free lunch boxes to the poor. He said that he lived a tough life since youth and also had a rough time starting up his business. After becoming the world champion of car salon competition, he decided to help more people in need. A sharp look along with an efficient work pace, this car salon owner Wong Jin Shen is a very famous figure in the industry. We call this our spec. It sees a lot of flaws our eyes cannot see. The more haze we see, it means the surface has more oxidation and includes a lot of oxides. Wang Jinsen describes his journey at the foreign competition as an eye-opening experience. He also understands that getting first place isn't an easy task. After we travel to a foreign country to participate in a competition, we start to do more research on haze and our spec. As more customers arrived based on his fame, Wang Jinsen's business grew. Though after the pandemic, everything came to a complete stop. Noodles and cans are packed into the food box. At the start of the pandemic, there were no customers as Wong Jin Sen and his employees had nothing to do. Not wanting to waste time, Wong Jin Sen started to do charity. They will come to Taipei because someone on the internet told him that he will help them if they are here. After they arrived, they got scammed. So at the time, I gave him 5,000 NT dollars and told them to keep it. Showing his messenger apps, Wong Jinsen's contacts are filled with strangers asking for help. This person, look at the son. The husband died and the son has a disability card. She has a child with severe disabilities. Wong Jinsen says that years ago he responded to the free lunch movement on Facebook. But after the pandemic, the demand for supplies grew all over Taiwan. Sunny's supplies are underneath free lunch boxes. One of his footage shows a struggling mother as it is very saddening. In the video, a single mother brought her two children on a motorcycle, coming in to receive their lunch boxes. Encountering the rain, the three of them are soaked in rainwater. People on the internet say that why is she riding a motorcycle here? The fuel expenses are enough to buy a lunch box. Why would you do this? There are actually a lot of comments that don't make sense. Actually, I feel that to these single parent families, it's fair unfair to them because you never know what the mother has to go through beforehand. Looking at three of them, Wong Jinsen immediately brought in lunch boxes. Living a tough life beforehand, he knew clearly the struggles of people in poverty. I had a high fever, and there was no one at home. My dad had to work. My mother wasn't there because she left me when I was young. Looking back at the tough moments, Wong Jinsen explained the reasoning behind his missing finger. During summer, I was in second grade in middle school. I was helping my family with chopping wood. I accidentally chopped off my finger. A finger less, but with more courage, Wong Jin knows in order to break free from poverty, he must work harder. I started from a car washing job in a gas station. A friend told me, you wash so many cars every day, and you get paid 10, 20,000 NT dollars per month. Instead of doing this, why not follow me and do a car alone? 
In Taiwan, it's tough to do charity since one must put a lot of money and effort. But Wang Jinsen isn't worried about this, as all he wants is to help more people in need. We do this, so when we provide supplies, I don't really think too much about it. It's about how we are able to do things and how much we can provide. If we don't have enough supplies, then I'll buy more. I feel like I'll do this until no one needs help. He describes that from poverty to giving, it's like a dream. Through hard work, Wong Jinsen uses his hands to provide one thing people need, allowing more people to get through the tough times. In Taiwan, when the government implemented their level alert, city volunteers paused recycling, closing down recycling stations. After the level 3 alert was resolved, many recycling stations resumed operation. Recycling volunteers returned to do recycling while avoiding COVID prevention rules. Senior recycling volunteers complained the days at home were boring, and it's great to be able to do recycling again. Eighty-year-old recycling volunteer Jian Xingji rides his motorcycle back to a familiar recycling station. At the corner of Xizhi Recycling Station, Jian Xingji is back at it again to categorize PET bottles. For two months, I didn't know what to do because I retired. Doing recycling makes me very happy. I can also play around with things. It's great to be here since I'm old and I don't have a job. After retiring from Taiwan Railways, the recycling station became Jian Xingzi's second home. Because this recycling station is my second home, after retirement, I had nothing to do, therefore I came here. The brothers and sisters here are very nice to me. In order to do recycling, steps such as registering, measuring body temperature, and disinfection has to be done. Though the recycling station paused operations for two months, after the level 3 alert, the recycling truck was filled within an hour. He kept calling because we must cooperate with the government. Once it was at the level 2 alert, we drove the truck out. The truck was immediately filled because there were a lot of recyclables. Before the level 3 alert, Xizhi Recycling Station had more than 30 recycling volunteers per day, though not everyone can return to the station now. Basically, we cannot contact actively recycling volunteers, because many recycling volunteers looked forward to coming back to the recycling station. According to policies, we must keep social distancing and avoid crowd gatherings. For two months, the recycling station gathered dust. Therefore, people came over yesterday to disinfect the place. Everything is disinfected, so we are confident to let recycling volunteers return. At the city, Bother Recycling Station resumed operation too. In order to obey COVID prevention measures, the recycling station also sets rules to avoid crowd gatherings. We have a big place, but there are only 10 people here. We have continuously cared for old bodhisattvas. They need care for us. When we called them, they told us, Sister, I feel sad. I asked them why. They told me it's because they cannot do recycling. Therefore, they feel sad. In the past, there were family members that opposed their seniors in their efforts to do recycling. After two months, these old bodhisattvas are happy to return to the recycling station. After recycling stations resumed operations, many recycling volunteers returned happily, ready to contribute once more while safeguarding our planet. As 
the pandemic eases in Taiwan, the government has lowered the alert level to two. Therefore, city recycling stations can resume their operations as long as the volunteers follow pandemic prevention measures. At Fuyang Recycling Station in Taichung, there's an elderly volunteer who comes to serve with her grandson. Meanwhile, the recycling volunteer leader Lin Xiuxia has been taking care of the recycling station during the period when it was closed. At Fuyang Recycling Station, recycling volunteers have put on their masks and maintained social distances as they sort recyclables. Safety is most important. We're happy that we can do recycling. We cherish the chance. We have taken a long break. I'm very happy that I can return to see these elderly volunteers. Now that the pandemic has eased, government has lowered the alert level to two. 65-year-old recycling volunteer leader Ling Xiuxia has been patrolling at the recycling station every day during the pandemic period. It gets muddy when it has not been used. We need to wash it. She looks after the recycling station and waters the plants, paying attention to details. This is like my home. I'll feel weird if I do not come here to take a look for a day. 67-year-old Zhang Su-mei also comes almost every day. She is in charge of providing teas and drinks to volunteers. Not a lot of people come here, so we try not to share the items. It is safer to have your own items. Besides coming to serve, she has also brought her eight-year-old grandson. We follow pandemic prevention measures. In fact, it is safe to be at a recycling station, so I bring my grandson here. Despite the pandemic, these volunteers still do their best to protect the environment. In Taiwan, the greenhouse effect and extreme climate have caused the number of pests and disease to rise steadily. This means the death rate of street trees has increased, leading to more disasters. If trees are in a poor growing environment for a long time, their resistance will become weaker and then can be more easily infected. Let's learn more in our feature report. This Bodhi tree suddenly collapsed, crushing a passerby to death. 台南市北区延平国中附近的一棵大树，就这样被连根拔起，直接压在路边的银色轿车上。同时也砸中刚好路过的汽机车。男驾驶头部受伤，没有大碍。四十九岁的女骑士则是当场失去呼吸心跳。
because some of them are sick. The current situation led to some preventive measures. For example, we have an inspection mechanism to check the health of trees. Inspectors will come to make a report through, and a tree doctor will do a health check. However, healing these street trees can't keep up with the speed of disease. This tree is affected by a gold wasp, which parasites is an egg on the leaf, causing the leaves to curl. The more pests and diseases, the greater the pesticide application, but this may not be a good thing for sick street trees. It is useless to spread the medicine outside. Why? This is because pests hide in the tumor of the leaves and suck the sap. Later, the government put pesticides under the roots. The whole tree became poisonous, and the birds who eat the worms will die. In the early days, most of the tree physicians sprayed medicines to kill insects, but such actions are no longer appropriate. If we continue to use poison to kill this pest here, it's impossible for the tree to be healthy. How do we effectively face this disease? The key is disease resistance like us getting a vaccination. Giving trees basic resistance to disease is something that simply can't be done through drugs to fight germs and pests. Only a good environment with adequate nutrition can allow these street trees to retain their beauty and strength while living in the city. In Taiwan several months ago, a fire accident has left a solitary man, Mr. Huang, with nothing. He was also treated for burn injury. After being discharged from the hospital, he has no home to return to. Social Affairs Bureau has arranged for him to settle down in a small rented house. Since there is no furniture, he can only sleep on a sleeping chair. Upon learning of his plight, city volunteers have brought a bed and furniture. City volunteers have brought a folding bed so that solitary Mr. Huang can have a bed to sleep on. When we came to care for him, there was only a sleeping chair. He slept on the sleeping chair. As there is nothing else, so we want to help him find a bed and some furniture. Volunteers have brought blanket, pillow and pants. They've also given me multi-grain powder and some mask. That is very good. Uh, oh, Several months ago, a fire accident left 66-year-old Mr. Huang with nothing. Social Affairs Bureau has arranged for him to stay in a small rented house. As Mr. Huang has been sleeping on a sleeping chair, volunteers decided to help him find furniture. We brought a table, a bed, and a cabinet with which he can store his items. This is donated by other people. When Siji's sister told me they need to move furniture, I immediately switched to my work shift. There are many people in need who need to walk on the right path. With a comfortable bed, table, and chair, Huang feels that he has a home now. He said that he can now start a new chapter of his life. In Taiwan during the pandemic period, people are going out less. Kaohsiung City Animal Protection Office has been promoting adoption of dogs through the internet. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.